Hello and welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at FAC Aurora. Thank you for joining with us. Pray that your week is going well. What a beautiful week we're having and uh, thankful that uh, uh, we are into spring. Uh, we're just claiming it, no more cold weather. And uh, just praying that, uh, uh, you know, this, this spring continues to progress uh, in a good way, a warm way, as, as we would all uh, love right now. Thank you for being with us. Uh, for those joining outside of FAC, my name is Greg Wilhelm. I am the executive pastor at FAC Aurora and uh, honored to uh, spend a few moments with you tonight. Uh, before we jump in, I do want to share a few quick announcements. Um, obviously, we're continuing our daily devotions. Uh, those are released nightly. Uh, so we've got Thursday and Friday night. Saturday will be another interview style devotion. Uh, Brother Tim Sitar. Uh, who had uh, over a 10-day stay uh, in the hospital on a ventilator, uh, you will definitely want to tune in Saturday and share that. We want to encourage people right now uh, who are battling COVID, going through COVID, uh, family members going through COVID, please share that uh, as I think it'll be a, a good encouragement uh, for everybody. And then, of course, Sunday will be our next regular scheduled service, 10 o'clock uh, right here, Facebook Live and YouTube. Uh, that'll start prayer time, of course, 30 minutes prior uh, to both Sunday mornings and Wednesday night. Uh, so please take advantage of that. A uh, prayer request. How many are thankful that that list continues to shrink? Uh, if you remember back 30, 45 days ago, that list of prayer requests was, was quite long. Uh, so thank the Lord. We, we are giving God all the glory for the miracles that we've seen uh, with people being healed and touched and strengthened and uh, our area as a whole, our church. Uh, so we're very thankful for the hand of God and for hearing our prayers. But we still want to remember Elsie Buford uh, is, is uh, of course, one of the names on the list. We want to continue to call out his name and ask God to touch him. Uh, from my step-grandfather, uh, uh, Brother Frazee, uh, who's up here in this area now, um, but uh, we need to, we need God to intervene and touch there um, and, and continue to remember all those who are sick and struggling. Uh, so please submit those prayer requests, info at facaurora.org. Sister Jessica sends those out every night and uh, continue to call those names and prayer. Youth have uh, some meetings tomorrow night, 730, I believe the time is. Uh, Brother Caulfield's uh, sending out that information. But let's jump into uh, Bible study tonight. I, I read recently a, a story about uh, seeing eye dogs, uh, how they train those. Of course, they, they are uh, there to help uh, with um, uh, vision challenge, blind individuals, uh, and, and a seeing eye dog can help uh, them navigate uh, quite, quite well. Uh, it's, it's quite uh, uh, impressive what they're able to do. But, but I began to look at the training of seeing eye dogs and, and really, uh, one may think that training would be all about things to avoid, uh, listening and heeding to commands, and how to lead an individual. But what I was interested to find out is that 75% of the training for a seeing eye dog is all about getting the dog to look up and to see things as a human would see things. So it's not about seeing things that two or three feet off the ground, um, but it's all about seeing things from five, six feet above ground. It, the, the training really is all uh, summed up in a few words. It's, it's gaining a different perspective. And, and, and I want to talk tonight about perspective. <clears throat> and for some, uh, a change in perspective may, may be a small adjustment, for some, a change in perspective is really completely changing how we see something. And, and I'm not really interested, <coughs> excuse me, in, in changing your perspective uh, to see things how I see things, nor am I really uh, interested in seeing things how you see things. What, what I really want to look at tonight is, is changing our perspective to see things the way that God sees things. I don't know about you, but I want to see things from God's perspective and from his eyes and, and then begin to understand and, and, and work from there. I remember hearing as a young man, and I'm not even sure who said it, so I can't give credit uh, 
uh, where credit is due here. But but it is something that has has stuck with me. And and the 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 person who was speaking, I believe, it was like a young minister's uh, session, or it may have been a message. I, I really don't know, but it, but it has been something that has stuck with me. But the speaker was talking about the the prophetic view of God, the prophetic view of God, and and the speaker began to see, uh, began to kind of give the the visual of how we see things. We see things on a very lateral level. Uh, uh, even if we're on the flattest of ground, and when we look out on a, on a lateral level, we can only see so far. Really, my view, my eyesight, uh, is completely dependent upon the things that are around me. Think about right now, if you walked outside of your home, of course, we live here in, in Illinois. There, there's not a lot of elevation changes per se. But, but if you walked out of your home right now and you began to look around 360 degrees, your view is totally dependent upon the things that are around you, the obstacles that are around you. You've probably got other homes or maybe cars, trees, bushes, uh, fences, uh, all the things that are around you. So your view on this level is totally and completely dependent upon the things that are around you. Think of it, uh, the old saying goes, don't make a mountain out of a molehill. What does that really mean? Sometimes a molehill can be just a couple inches off the ground, but when it is up close, sometimes that's the only thing we can see. And, and we, we think it's a, a massive mountain, but really it's, it's something very small, but it obstructs our view. So as this, this preacher began to talk about the prophetic view of God, we see things on a, on a, on a lateral level but God sees things from a vertical level. Right now, uh, and for the last couple of years, uh, drones are, are really all the rage because they give you a different level of seeing things. I, I had one, uh, it was just one that was operated with your phone. It, it was fun to get that thing up in the air and, and to see like above your house. Uh, my problem was mine wasn't very good. It, it was a lighter one. And if there was any wind, it was ended up in the top of a tree. Um, so I, I got rid of it long ago. But, but it was really cool to see things from a, a different level. Uh, I, I recently saw a video of someone put a, a drone in downtown Chicago, which is a little eerie because there's nobody like at the Bean or Grants Park or walking up and down Michigan Avenue. It was, it was a totally different view of things. But, but I would submit to you tonight that that vantage point uh, is really nothing new. Because in my mind, if you allow me to put it like this, I believe kind of that's how God sees things. From God's vantage point, he sees everything right now. He's not really obstructed by things here on a lateral level. God sees everything about us. And I'm not talking just physically. I'm talking talking your life. God, when he looks at you from, from his vantage point, he sees your past. He sees what's going on right now, but God also sees your future. And he sees all in the same time from the same vantage point. And it's that future is what he is keeping us drawn to and he's pulling us towards. But we oftentimes become so consumed with what's going on right now that we also oftentimes lose fact or lose sight of where we come from, but also where we're going to because we don't see the big picture. That's why perspective is so, so vital. Uh, a man by the name of Thomas Wheeler tells a story. Now, Mr. Wheeler is actually a CEO of, a, of, of the Massachusetts Mutual Life Company. So, so a, a pretty well-off uh, individual. And he tells the story about perspective. He said that he and his wife were traveling along uh, an interstate highway and was getting low on gas. So he pulls off the highway at the next exit and where it advertised gas. But what they found was really kind of a, a rundown gas station. There was one gas pump. So they pull up and, and uh, one attendant, the loan attendant, comes out. And he says, hey, go ahead and fill it up. Check the oil. Uh, just take a look at everything. So the attendant uh, uh, started to look around, and Mr. Wheeler 
went for a walk, was kind of stretching his legs, got, you know, something to drink, but he had to wait for the attendant to come back in to even purchase it. But, but as Mr. Wheeler is returning to the car, he notices that this, this lone gas attendant and his wife are engaged in a conversation. And, and as he paid the attendant, uh, he got back in his car, the conversation stopped, and, and he noticed that the attendant and his wife waved at each other, and, and even the attendant said, it was great talking to you again. So they drove out of the gas station, and curiosity kind of got the best of Mr. Wheeler, and he asked his wife, like, how did you know that man? And she said, yeah, I, I know him, of course. Uh, they had actually went to high school together, and had even dated for a while in high school. And, and Mr. Wheeler said, boy, you are lucky that I came along and kind of bragging, you know, as, as some of us men may, may do from time to time. And uh, he even says, if you would have married him, you would have been the lucky wife of a gas station attendant instead of the wife of a CEO of a company. And his wife looked back ever so uh, uh, quickly and said, my dear. And, uh, and she goes on to say, if I had married him, he'd be the CEO and you'd be the gas station attendant. <laughs> it, it's all about perspective, right? It's all about perspective. It's been said that when other people take a long time to do something, they are slow. But if we take a long time, we're just being thorough. If if, if uh, you know, when, when someone else doesn't do something, we, we say, well, they're just being lazy. But when we don't do it, we're just too busy. When someone else succeeds, they're lucky. But when, when we do it, well, we deserved it. It was hard earned. When, when we say others are set in their ways, they're being obstinate. But when we're set in our ways, it's just me being firm and knowing whom I am, who I am. Oftentimes, we gauge others by their actions, but we gauge ourselves by intentions. Again, it's really all about perspective. The way you see things, the way you view things, the way you perceive things really makes all the difference in the world. Now, I would submit to you tonight that if there was ever a battle that we must fight and a victory that we must win, I would submit to you tonight that that battle and that victory is the battlefield of our minds. What happens right here? It's a battle that rages all the time. Now, I don't, I personally don't believe that our greatest enemy is, is Satan. Yes, he is the adversary. Yes, he seeks whom he may devour. But, but that also, uh, you have to continue to read on. You have to take the holistic view of Scripture because the Bible also lets us know, and it makes it abundantly clear that Satan is also a defeated foe. Jesus defeated him at Calvary and, and sentenced him to, to, to uh, uh, hell and a, and a fiery grave. So, so I don't believe that Satan is our greatest adversary. I believe our greatest adversary is really ourselves. It's our perspective, how we see things. Because locked up in, in, the, in, in our minds are many things. There are secrets that, that no one will ever know locked up in your mind. There are fears that, that we won't admit, fears that we hope remain un, undiscovered. There are doubts locked up in our minds, doubts about ourselves, doubts about others. There may be even doubts about God. And it is in the secret recesses of our minds that this battle is raging. And Paul talks about this in, in, in the book of Romans. And he, he refers to this battlefield as the carnal mind. Look what uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 6 and 7 says. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. In other words, what Paul is saying here is that our nature has a tendency to fight against the things of God. We are at odds with God and his ways, and we have no way of reconcil reconciling those differences on our own. The natural man is at war against the spiritual. The war, I would submit to you tonight, is our perspective. The, the, 
the, the carnal man, the flesh sees things one way. The spiritual mind sees, another, uh, sees things a different way. It's a change of perspective. And these things are at war in each and every one of us. And when we try to understand the things of God with a natural mind, listen, we are always going to come up short. And, and, and the things of God, if you really want to understand and begin to receive the spiritual mind, we must understand that the things of God will only be received and understood through faith. That's why Hebrews 11.3 says, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Through faith, we understand. You see, we can exhaust all of our resources, all of our knowledge, all technologies, and, and we may still never understand the ways and the things of God. It doesn't make sense that a spoken word by the God of all the, all of, all the universe could, could speak the earth into existence. It's not logical to think that an iron axe head could float. It doesn't make sense that a man could walk on water. We can't explain Jericho's walls falling down flat at the sound of a tr trumpet and a, and a shout of victory. It doesn't make sense that 5,000 men plus women and children could be satisfied by five loaves and two fishes to where there is extras to be taken up by the basket full. Listen, we only believe and understand these things through faith. After all, faith is the substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen. The perspective that is, that is being battled for uh, is to get us to keep our eyes on this level, a lateral level, a natural level, a carnally minded level, to never see things through the lens of God, because if we can't see it, it must not be true. It must not be real. And if we can't see it, and if we don't believe it's real, then we lose our faith. And because our perspective now is becoming defeated, we then too are already defeated because we have lost faith. Therefore, we cannot understand. But allow me this evening to direct your attention to the words of Jesus found uh, in the book of Mark and the 11th chapter. Verse 22, uh, a very uh, familiar portion of scripture, just starts, have faith in God. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatever he says. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Now, a little context for the words of Jesus here. The disciples came to him and really they're trying to impress Jesus. And they're telling, they asked Jesus, Jesus, increase our faith. Lord, if there's anything we want, just increase our faith. And it seems like on the surface that this is a really good request, that that is a good prayer to pray. But Jesus looks back at them, and he never acknowledges their request. He, he never even mentions their petition to increase their faith. I believe it's because Jesus realized their perspective was, was off. It was wrong here. And he looks at them and says, if you just had the faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, be that removed, and it shall be removed. What Jesus was getting at, and really what, what I want to hone in on tonight is simply this. The disciples thought that their faith had to be great enough for things to really happen. As if it was in their power to raise and generate enough faith that, that miracles could happen. But that was not the case. He said, if you just have faith, look, it can be the size of a grain of mustard seed, but if you have faith, nothing shall be impossible to you. And by Jesus answering in this fashion, he was, he was saying to them, your faith really doesn't need to increase. It really doesn't rely on the, the level 
or the, uh, uh, the accumulation of your faith. If you've got a faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, you've got everything you already need and you don't even know it. You've got everything you need in order to see the miraculous. But gentlemen, you've got to change your perspective. If you just have a measure of faith, there is nothing you cannot do with the Lord on your side. The, the old song says, it doesn't matter if you've got a whole lot or a little. You've just got to use what you've got. Have faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. That's the old song. But the point is, you don't have to accumulate enough faith. You just have to have faith in the right spot. Your perspective has to be in faith in God, not faith in yourself. And when your faith is in God, you can stand back and let God be God. The, the, the end time, the, the book of Revelation, John is the revelator is watching the end, end time really unfold before his eyes. And, and of course, that's why we call him John the Revelator. And, and really what it was happening here is, is, is God was giving John a new perspective of things. And one place in the book of Revelation, John uses the phrase, I saw 36 times in 34 verses. I saw this. I saw that. I saw this. The Lord was changing John's perspective to say things aren't happening on the lateral level at all times. There is a spiritual realm. There is a prophetic view that, that I want to show you. So, so John begins to write about all the things that he saw because by seeing them, his faith was increased and, and his perspective changed. But, but look at Revelation chapter 5. First four verses say this, and I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within on the backside sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof. This angel is saying this. And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And John said, because he saw nobody, no one in heaven or on earth or below the earth that was able to do it, he says in verse 4, and I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And at this point, John, as he's writing the things that he has seen, he is so overcome by, by emotion and anxiety and desperation, because he doesn't know how things are going to end here. And from John's earthly, limited perspective, it seems that that destiny is literally hanging in the balance because no one is worthy to open the seals of the scroll of judgment, which will then vindicate the redeemed of all ages. There's no one in heaven or the dominion of God, the spiritual things, or uh, uh, no one in earth, the dominion of man, or under the earth, even the dominion of, of Satan, found capable of completing the task. So John this, this veteran, this isn't just a rookie speaking, this is John, a veteran of, of personal persecution, battles with religious leaders and Roman emperors, even fought Satan himself. John is now reduced to tears because of the outcome of the ages is uncertain by his limited view and perspective. So John says, I wept much because no man was found worthy. The things of God are oftentimes far different from the way they appear to us in our earthly perspective. So, so look at what happens here. The next verse, Revelation 5.5, 5, one of the worshiping elders steps over to John, and, and, it said, and he said to, said to John, weep no more, for behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has conquered so that he can open the scroll and its seven seals. And between the throne and the four living creatures among the elders, he said, I saw a lamb standing as though it had been slain. See, the problem wasn't so much in John's eyesight. The problem really lied in John's perspective. What he saw was completely correct, but what he understood was what was incorrect here. So this elder comes over to John, this worshiping elder, and, and he says, John, stop your crying. Stop your belly aching. You're weeping. I want you to behold the lion of the tribe of Judah. But when John looked, he said, I don't see a lion. I only see a lamb. So the one who was wailing and, and uncertain about the times 
He had his eyes on the problem, but the one who was worshiping had his eyes on the solution. And what the elder was trying to point to John was saying all that Satan did the day he killed the lamb, the, the day that Jesus Christ was crucified on an old rugged tree, all Satan did when he killed the lamb was unveiled the lion. So John, you need to change your perspective. Don't get so caught up on the things that are going on around you right now. Lift up your eyes. Get your eyes on the Lord on a spiritually minded level because when you do so, you won't be so focused on the lamb that was slain, but you're going to see the lion from the tribe of Judah. It's all about perspective. Look at what Isaiah said, and I end with this. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts, they are higher than your thoughts. We must change our perspective. With everything going on around us right now, with all the sickness and the uncertainty of when we're going to get back to church, when we can get back to, to going out to eat. How many want to go to a Mexican restaurant tonight and enjoy some chips and salsa around the table of friends and family? I think we all want to do that. We all want to get back out. We all want to get back uh, to the things that we knew before. But with all of this uncertainty around us, so often we can get so consumed with seeing things on this level but I fully and wholeheartedly believe that God is going to take this. And, and, and if we get our eyes where he sees things, I promise you, it will start to change the way that you're living right now. I fully believe we're about to experience explosive revival. I believe God is using, going to use this to draw people back to him. I believe our altars are going to be full of people uh, seeking after God, turning their lives so we're starting relationship. We're going to need people to teach Bible studies. We're going to need people to, to connect with, with people, to disciple one another. We're going to need all hands on deck when we do get to get back together. And even right now, we need to be preparing right now for what God is going to do, but we've got to change our perspective and allow his mind to come in our mind and to see things as he sees things. Amen. I want us to pray tonight. That ought to be our prayer. Lord, change my perspective. I want to see things the way you see things. I want to see them from your perspective. Let's pray tonight. Thank you, Lord, God, for your faithfulness, God, for your unwavering uh, uh, faithfulness to us, God. Lord, you have been in uh, just so good to us and kind and gracious and merciful to us. Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, for you, uh, for who you are in our lives, God, for your strength, God, for uh, the miracles that we've seen and, and, and the healings, God, that have taken place. Lord, you have been so good to us. You've been good to FAC. You've, you have blessed uh, throughout the years, God, and we can look back and say, we are only here today because of your faithfulness towards us. Lord, and I pray right now, God, and again, in this season of uncertainty, Lord, that, that we would raise our, our eyes, that we would raise our faith, God, and put our faith solely in you, God, to see things as you see things, God. I pray that you would give us a glimpse, God. I pray that there would be a stirring in the hearts and minds of your people, God, that, that we would not be so caught up in, in seeing things on a, on, on a ladder, on, a, on an earthly level, God, but, but, but that we would begin to see the, the things that you have in store for us, God, that you would show us the things that, that are coming, Lord, and that we would not just uh, look to those things as some distant land or some distant uh, 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 thing that is to come, Lord, but that we would be preparing our hearts right now through prayer and fasting and, and digging into your word, God, and allowing your view to become our view and allowing your perspective to become our perspective, Lord, that we would begin to work, God, not only with what things are to come in the next couple of weeks or months, God, but, but that we would live with a, a heavenly perspective, God, that one day you're going to call us home and we want to take as many people home as we can with us. Lord, I pray that you would help us stir our hearts. God, stir my heart. Let it start in me. God, change my perspective. Change my view, God the way that you see things, Lord. And I give you all, all the glory. I give you all the praise. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your faithfulness. We praise you. And it's in your name, Jesus, we pray. 
Amen. Amen. I want the right perspective. I want the right perspective. I'll end with this, uh, the story of David and Goliath. I don't need to go through all the details of that tonight. But when Goliath came against the Israelites, all the soldiers, their, their perspective was, he's so big, there's no way we could ever kill him. But when David, that young shepherd boy, sent by his father to take food to his brothers, when David looked at the giant, he wasn't so much saying, he's so big, I can never kill him. No, David's perspective was, that giant is so big, I can't miss him. It's all about perspective. I pray God helps us tonight. Thank you again for being with us tonight. Thank you for joining Bible study tonight. I pray it was an encouragement to you. Don't forget tomorrow night, uh, another nightly devotion, Friday night, Saturday interview, Sunday, we're going to have a great time. Go in the power and the name of Jesus Christ. Have faith in him and allow your perspective to change. God bless you.